All right, hello, and thank you for joining us at, for the Raptor identification through the Audubon Society. My name is Blake Hatton, and I will be helping to host this program. Uh, first up, we have Peg Rooney, president of the Arkansas Valley Audubon Society, who will make a few introductory remarks. Thanks, Blake. I want to welcome you all here today and remind you that the Great Backyard Bird Count is going on through February 21st. And all you have to do is take 15 minutes out of your day and count the birds that you see in your backyard or anywhere on your property and then enter that data into the website birdcount.org. And this data gives researchers at the Audubon Society and the Cornell Lab for Ornithology, a snapshot of how bird populations are doing across the country. So it's a free and fun way to help birds. And another way that you can help and protect birds is by joining your local Audubon Society. And you can find membership information about Arkansas Valley Audubon on our website, Southern Colorado Birds, abbreviated SOCO, so SOCO Birds, Dot org, and we hope you'll join us. And now I'll turn it back to Blake and he'll introduce our speaker. Thank you, Peg. Our speaker today is Debbie Barnes. She is uh, works with the, um, she had volunteered with the Parks and Wildlife Department before and she is a published author as well. And she is working uh, with raptor identification for several uh, years now, I believe. And so now she will, uh, I can find my words. She will host our program today and give our presentation. So without any further ado, take it away, Debbie. Hi, thank you, Blake. Uh, I, as Blake said, I volunteer with uh, Parks and Wildlife doing raptor ID and bir breeding bird surveys. Uh, I've been birding for 20 years and uh, written a couple of books for birding at Fluorescent Fossil Beds National Monument. Um, we haven't published the one for Cheyenne Mountain yet. Uh, and I'm working on one for Mueller State Park. Uh, so let's get started with Raptor ID. Um, we're going to be talking about several groups of raptors. So I like to split it into five groups. So we have the eagles, of which there's only two. So you, if you can get to eagles, then you got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. And then we do the bootios, which are the broad-winged, short-tailed soaring hawks. And then we do our... Uh, Falcons, which are our um, sort of jet fighter, fast moving uh, raptors. And then there's the other something else, which would be our vultures, our kites, our osprey, and our harriers. And then our sipiters, which tend to be kind of the hardest group to ID because you have a lot of similarities. Um, but we can get you there with my little methodology, which we'll talk about as we go through this. So one of the first lessons of looking at raptors, especially when they're in the sky and there's no point of reference or sense of scale is size doesn't matter. So the bird on the left looks smaller than the bird on the right. Yet in reality, when you put them against say a telephone pole, which is 10 to 12 inches wide at the top, you can see that the bird on the left is larger than the bird on the right. So don't let size fool you when you are out in the field. So let's talk about our eagles. Again, very large raptors. We have the golden eagle and the bald eagle here in Colorado. And the adult golden eagle is kind of a chocolatey brown with golden uh, nape on the neck. Uh, they have feathering down to their toes, which their toes are right here. Um, they're a very large raptor. They breed all over the state. When they fly, they tend to fly with uh, very flat wings. Sometimes they'll have what we call the fingers. These are the primary flight feathers here spread out, but you can still see that golden nape and even golden bits all over them if you get the lighting right. A very large raptor. You see that feathering all the way down to the toes. Um, and they kind of have, they're proportional, so their head fits their body size. Uh, but in bright light, that nape can look almost white, but you see that the beak is large, but it fits uh, proportional to the size of the head and the body, and then these nice, long, straight wings when they're flying, and they have a rounded tail. 
And then when we get to the juvenile golden eagles, most eagles take about five years, especially the bald eagles, to reach adult plumage. They'll start out with a lot of white all over, um, but the white on a golden eagle tends to be on the non-muscled parts of the body. So the muscles kind of go along here and of course into the body. And then you can see that they're in the flight feathers here and then they'll kind of have a nice white band on their tail. Uh, younger birds will have a little bit more white going up into the muscled part of the body, but the most of the white, again, is still on the non-muscled part of the body. Uh, they build very large nests, usually on rock cliffs, where they can stay out of the way or into a discreet little cavelet. This is a nest out in eastern El Paso County that's been in use for thousands and thousands of years. These nests weigh thousand, a thousand pounds and half of it will fall off every few years because they add sticks to it every year. Now our adult bald eagle, it's our national bird. Everyone knows it has a big white head and a white tail. It has a very large beak that is not proportional to the head as it, the golden eagle is. They are more of a dark black brown um, and then that white tail uh, is more wedge-shaped versus rounded. Uh, in winter, they can be found roosting in groups. Generally, they're near water, um, but in winter, they can be anywhere. Um, but they do nest near water because they're fish-eating um, eagles. And in winter, they tend to feed on carrion um, and other items, ducks um, in icy rivers. So that very large bill is sort of the big giveaway, big yellow, very large bill, big headed, um, you know, to their body. Um, obviously an adult bald eagle with the white tail and the white head is going to be a bald eagle. Uh, when they're in flight, they kind of have the paddle shaped wings where they kind of come down and then they nip in as they come into the body. And then they have that wedge tailed wing. So these very broad wings, but paddling out uh, in the um, closer to the body until they nip in. And then the juvenile bald eagles, the white is on the muscle, mostly on the muscled part of the bodies. And again, you can still really see that very large yellow bill, that wedge tail. You can still see that paddle shape of the wings where they kind of come and nip in at the waist. And here, again, a very good example of the wedge tail, the large beak, and then the paddle wings coming in and nipping in at the waist. Uh, they tend to build their nest in trees near water, and uh, they're, again, very heavy duty nests. Uh, trees sometimes will fall down because of these nests. So here's a something else, and that's a turkey vulture. And I put it here after the eagles because it's a pretty good sized bird, but it's gonna appear almost headless. It's gonna be that dark chocolate brown, but underside of the wings are gonna be silvery on the flight feathers here. So these are the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary feathers. Um, and then they tend to fly with a V shape um, and they tend to not flap very much and then they rock back and forth. And I don't know if you can see me demonstrating on, on stage, I tend to fly. And so they have a, a red head with a ivory bone white beak, small beak. Um, and when they're very warm or excited, then their head can be very red. And then it can be very pale pink uh, when they're colder and uh, not so excited. They tend to, in cold weather, especially in the morning, sit up in a tree and they'll kind of put their wings out and face the sun and warm up using thermal reg regulation with the solar. So here they are sitting in a tree, their pink heads and their beaks, they don't make any sounds. They will nest on the ground, in a cave, on a shelf um, or in a log, a rotted out log. Um, the most they can make is a hissing sound. But here is that very distinguished V dihedral in flight, and then they'll rock back and forth. You can see this one's molting some flight feathers 
and then the almost headless appearance that they have. And because you can see that head just sort of merges right into their body, a uh, small head just because they don't have all the feathers that the other birds, but they have that nice dark body and then those silver flight feathers on the underside and in a bidihedral. And then youngsters will be more brown and they'll have rattier feathers. Um, here they are warming up in the morning. This is a March morning in New Mexico, uh, getting that solar radiation, waiting for those warm air currents to start rising up so that they can go fly and search for carrion to eat. And they are very important in our ecosystem to getting rid of think rotting things so that we don't have diseases running rampant. Our next group is the Budios, and we're gonna talk about uh, our four, two resident, the red-tailed hawk and Ferruginous hawk, and then our summer visitor, the Swainson's hawk, and our winter visitor, the rough-legged hawk, and then our broad-winged hawk, which is an Eastern forest Budio that breeds up in Northeast Colorado and does pass through in migration up two points further north as we are part of the central flyway. So we'll talk about the most common budio, which is our red-tailed hawk. 99% of the time when you're driving along a road and you see a hawk sitting on a pole, it will probably be a red-tailed hawk. And that's why we call them a part, P-A-R-T, probably a red tail. Um, they are resident here. They can be found, uh, they're very generalist. You can find them in Central Park, New York. You can find them in the jungles down in Puerto Rico out in the plains, in the forest, um, up north in the Alaska on the tundra, uh, they are everywhere. And they, they're generalists, so they can feed on frogs, snakes, insects, rabbits, uh, you know, you name it, they can eat it. Um, so if the bird has a brick red tail, it's a red tail. So you can see here this nice brick red tail. Um, when they're sitting budios kind of have some uh especially the light morph so they have light morphs and dark morphs and if they're sitting they'll have uh from the front they're going to have a dark head a light breast and a dark belly depending on how which subspecies you're talking about there's 18 17 or 18 subspecies of red tails so that belly band can be very broad in this young um broad and dark in this very young bird. And I'll show you a picture of one that doesn't have, there's one here that you can see that dark, light, dark um, of the dark head, the light breast and the dark. Um, in flight, they have a dash and a comma. So this dash is the patagium, which is kind of like your bicep. You can see that dash really well here. And then out by the wrist, they have a comma. So a dash and a comma in flight. Um, on the darker birds, that may or may not be as obvious. And then if they have a white tail and are chocolatey uh, black, that's a Harlan's hawk and a dark bird. So let's go look at some different birds. Oh, and from behind, they're going to have a backpack strap. On their scapular feathers, they're going to have this V or U shape um, of white feathers in their scapular feathers. So in flight, we see the red tail. Um, they have the backpack straps. And they're proportional, their head to their body size matches. And then they fly with a slight forward dihedral where their wings are kind of pushed forward in the red tail. Um, from underneath, you're going to see that really distinctive dash and a comma, and then a dark head, a light breast, and a dark belly. And then, of course, that beautiful brick red tail. So even in this shallow angle, this is a second year bird. They have what we call windows in the wings. These uh, primary flight feathers they came out of the nest with, and they will molt these later in the summer, and then they won't have that light showing through. But you can still see the dash and the comma and the dark head and the light breast, and then you can barely see a, a belly band there. So dark, light, dark. From behind, on this bird, you can see the uh, backpack straps really well, not to mention the brick red tail. 
So they nest in trees. Uh, they have three to five, four young, generally speaking. Um, and they're very defensive of their nesting habitat. So you definitely want to give them, you know, good 400 feet away from their nest to not disturb them. If they're calling because you're disturbing them, then you're too close and you need to back off. Um, their feathering only kind of goes down to their knees. So they have bare shins down to their toes. Um, but you can still see that dark, light, dark on this bird. Um, this nest is up on Pawnee grasslands, has a dark morph bird, a red rufous morph bird, and two light morph birds all in the same nest. And when they're getting ready to branch out, they, you know, they're, these guys are getting close to fledging. These guys are just starting to sit out on the edge of the nest and start exercising those wings. And then their younger siblings are inside the nest. So again, in flight, that dash and a comma, that dash goes all the way through the leading edge of the wing. Um, in the second year bird here in the spring, you can see those wing windows in the wings, but they still, they just have dash or a banded tail versus the red tail that the adult has. And then dark, light, dark. And then I just put this one in here because it's just such a fabulous picture of a red tail coming at you, taking off from a power line. And then here's a nice dark rufous morph, but you can still see the dash and the comma, the brick red tail, um, the bare legs. And then the dark morph, uh, this is a small male taken down in Canyon City along the river walk. Um, but he still has the red tail and the backpack straps and if we, you know depending on and then there's the Harlan's hawk which comes down in the winter this is a subspecies of red tail that's more instead of those warm browns is more brick uh, black colored with a white tail um, and there's that white banded tail with a, a little dark subterminal band on that tail and then another immature bird in spring, they're very splotchy. Instead of nice fine markings, they have splotchy markings. And then that banded tail, but they're still dark, light, dark. And they still have their dash. It's not as fully filled in and comma. This is a bird over on the right that's just come out of the nest. So it still has some white around the head that will are just nestling feathers that are gonna is the other feathers fill in, but it still has its backpack straps, the banded tail, and it will have the um um the dash and the comma on the wings. And after a while you see enough red tails, you just recognize a red tail head, but dark light dark and in their nest. Then there's our ferruginous hawk. It's our largest bootio. I tend to call it the Arnold Schwarzenegger of the bootios because it's extremely beefy. Look at how big that head is to body size. Very beefy. And they're called ferruginous for this iron rust colored on their wings. Beautiful, beautiful bird. Um, they have a gape, um, which is the yellow skin around the, the side of the beak that goes, if you draw a line down from the middle of the eye, it will intersect that gape. Uh, mostly we have here in Colorado, the light morphs, but in winters we do get dark morph uh, ferruginous. They tend to have a whitish to gray tail to like a pink almost, depending on uh, you know which bird you get. But from the upper side, you're gonna see those really uh, ferruginous or rusty uh, wings a shoulder scapulars, and then they have this white window as an adult in their wings, uh, in these flight feathers. That is because the, the flight the feathers are white. Uh, big beefy head. Um, they fly pretty straight, almost like an eagle. They're not quite eagle size, but close. So they do have um, dark on the patagium, but it you can see that white on the leading edge of the wing. So it doesn't go fully through. And then they do have the comma on their wings. But what they do have is rusty leggings or pants that go all the way down to their toes. 
and then they are light, light, light. So a light grayish light head, a white breast, and a white belly. And then that nice V of their pantaloons, uh, and then that white tail. So very, whoops, light colored, light, 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 and then the rusty V of their leggings. And then you can see really well demonstrated here that the the dash on the patagium doesn't go fully through the leading edge of the wing. You can see the white feathers coming down over that leading edge, but they do have a comma. Matter of fact, all of the uh, budios that here in Colorado have that comma, but that white tail, um, just a beautiful, but look how beefy that head looks and um, to the wings and everything. It's just a very beefy bird. And then from the upper side, here you can see some red, but it doesn't go fully through the tail like the red tail. But then you see that beautiful ferruginous scapulars here, and then the white windows in their flight feathers and secondary, primary and secondary flight feathers. And here is a fence. You know, this post is probably what, four or five inches around. This is a big female, and she's having to lay back on her, kind of on her hocks here, because she's so big. Uh, they like to sit on the ground on a little high point on the ground. They hunt rabbits and um, prairie dogs. And then here you can see that yellow gape. And if you bring a line right down through the center of the eye, it intersects that yellow gape. And then the ferruginous shoulder scapulars, but light, light, light. And then the red uh, leggings. And then here is a dark morph, very rusty red, but still white tail, uh, big beefy head and then the rusty leggings going all the way down to the toes. And here you don't see that dash, it is a little darker, but they still have that comma in the wings. So, um, and then the gape, you can see that yellow gape going all the way back through the middle of the eyes. Uh, they tend to be a little more approachable than red tails, uh, except for in their nesting territory, where they're gonna nest a half a mile from any road. Um, they'll nest in a tree on a nest platform, um, but it's going to be a tree or something all by itself. Um, and then here on a telephone pole, excuse me, you can see that uh, gape going through the, the middle of the eye and then the rusty leggings, but otherwise kind of a light colored grayish head, a light colored breast and a light colored belly, light, light, light. And here is a nest in a tree out by itself. And here's a scoped view of the nestlings in the nest. And then the immature birds are going to be very plain looking, but light colored, but there's that feathering going all the way down to the legs. And then you can just tell young birds are kind of, I don't know, more splotchy. They have sort of messed up feathers because they have to grow these feathers so fast in the nest. And so they're not as good as the feathers that they molt in when they start molting into their adult plumage. So they get kind of broken, pull, you know, missing, uh, rough looking, um, but it's still that, that dark V shape and then light, light, light. And here's another one in April. And you can see he's starting to molt in some better feathers, but then you have these feathers that have been, you know, seen in the sun and, so they, they, they're kind of faded out, kind of a dirty looking tail, but mostly white. And then that gape, again, even from the underside, but very clean underneath uh, for a ferruginous hawk. And then that big beefy head. Uh, this was a fun photo that a, a bird that I was feeding on a rabbit on the side of the road. Uh, they can look even more beefier when they're gobbling down food and it's sitting in their crop. Um, but you can still see that gape going through the middle of the eye, then, you know, the roof ferruginous or rusty scapulars here, and then the leg, the leggings, the dark leggings that go all the way down to the toes. Light, light, light. Then there's Debbie, our summer had, hawk. Debbie, yes. really quick. We had a couple of questions from Peg. Um, first one, she said that an article just came out saying that more than half of the bald eagle population suffers from lead poisoning due to eagles eating gut piles left behind by hunters and ingesting lead fishing tackle. What do you think can be done to address this problem? Well, for, for hunting to use non-lead bullets uh, would be a good choice. 
And then in terms of the tackle, I don't know that they've come up with non-lead sinkers, uh, but to clean up your lines and your lead tackle as much as possible so that the, the, it won't get ingested by the, the eagles. And this is also a big issue with the uh, uh, condors also uh, getting lead poisoning. Mm -hmm. And then the second question is, what is a good place to see ferruginous hawks? I would go east. Uh, here in El Paso County, I just go out east. Uh, uh, Ellicott Highway, a lot of times south of um, Highway 24, uh, this is more Colorado Springs centric. Um, I see in the winter a lot of ferruginous hawks on various poles, but I just go out east. Uh, winter time is a great time to go look for raptors. Uh, so out in the grasslands where there's prairie dog towns and um, look for wired roads where you have power or telephone wires out there and look on those poles. Great. Thank great. you. You're welcome. Uh, so then our, our summer budio is our Swainson's hawk, and they fly all the way from Argentina uh, to Colorado, and they come here for our grasshoppers and to nest. And they have very long wings because they're a long-distance migrant, so those wing tips will come down almost to the tip of the tail, if not a little longer. And uh, they're an interesting one, so I don't know if you remember in the Fruginus and red tail, but the flight feathers on the underside were light-colored. Here in the Swainsons, the flight feathers are dark colored on the underside, and then their their wings are very light colored, and they are kind of a dark, dark light. So they have this dark head, a dark uh, breast, and then a light colored belly. And then they have this banded tail with the uh, subterminal band, which is the next to last band on the tail being a little thicker. And uh, they do have a headlight, so they have a little patch of white light colored feathers just above the yellow skin above their beak. Um, so they're very dainty looking, very uh, slender looking, almost falcon like with pointed wings uh, because of the length of their wings. Um, and they come up here and they nest um, again out east in little tree sections uh, where they will raise their little chicks on grasshoppers. And they arrive here in late March, early April. Um, and here, this immature one, this is a second year. You can see the, the, um, the breast starting to get a little bit of darkness. Sometimes I'll see that like on one side of the bird, they'll have that. On the other side, they won't have anything. And then as they get into their adult plumage, that beautiful um, breast. And even in this dark morph or rufous morph, you can see that breast patch is very different colored from the belly. So long pointed wings, dark flight feathers on the underside, uh, banded tail, dark head, dark breast, um, kind of a cream colored on the underside. They don't have feathering, you know, like the red tail, they have bare shins there. Um, and then very pointed wings. They kind of kind of have this gray wash over their color of brown. And they're out here nesting in discrete little nests. Uh, the dark morphs and rufous morphs will still have that different breast patch. And they're petite, but they have that little headlight look to them. And then again, they look very different. There's no red tail from the red-tailed uh, uh, raptor uh, hawks here. Uh, so here's an immature bird. They're blotchy versus the adult birds, which are clean. Um, in April, there's plenty passing through. Um, they're just very kind of clean birds, very dark and cream and almost golden uh, with that headlight and the banded tail. Uh, so they're easy to identify because they're different from the other raptors that we see. And then here is a discrete nest with a lot of green around it. And then there's that white feathers to make that headlight of uh, Swainson's hawk. And then that cheek chick in another nest. And then there's our winter hawk, which is our rough leg. It comes down from the Arctic. They fly a lot like a uh, Northern Harrier in that they uh, hover a lot um, and they kind of course back and forth. But instead of being say, 
five or six feet off the ground. They're much higher up. Um, they're a very petite, small, compact raptor. So here you can see an insulator on a power pole, and it's sitting on top of that. And then they are, well, let me go back to my, uh, sorry, I think I went over this. So they're going to be dark, dark, light on the Swainson's Hawk. So our red tail is dark, light, dark. Our Bruges Hawk is light, light, light. And our rough legged is light, light, dark. So they have a very thick belly band, a light colored head, a light colored breast. And then they have wing patches, wrist patches uh, in their wings in flight. And so on the light birds, you can really see those wrist patches. And then they have a light colored tail with a thick subterminal band. And then those wrist patches, and um, and then on the back they're very mottled colored. So very rounded, you know, head to body, and then the light, light, dark. So there's that dark belly band, and then the wrist patches here, and then the white tail with the thick subterminal band. The thicker the belly band, the the then this will be a female bird. The male birds will have a little thinner belly band, but they'll have a thicker subterminal band. So here is a male bird with the thicker subterminal band and the thinner belly band, but there's those really distinctive wrist patches in flight. So here is a nice sort of palomino golden, uh, probably female because of that thick belly band and thinner subterminal band. And then the dark morph, the belly band may not be as obvious. The wrist patches may not be as obvious, but look at sort of the petite, small, bulky head uh, to body ratio. And it's just a small, very buoyant, light bird. They'll hover. And then here's this beautiful male with that thicker subterminal band. Uh, you can see the belly band here. And then the nice wrist patches but look at the coloring on this bird. And these are all birds that I photographed in Colorado. And then from the back, they have a very mottled, you know, a lot of white on their back. And then you can see those long wings coming almost down to the tail. And then this is a female because of that really thick belly band, uh, but light, light, dark. And they have feathering down to the toes. And then our broad wing hawk is mostly seen in migration. Um, they are uh, an eastern bird, so if you go back east, you'll see them more. They're a forest hawk, budio. They're going to be very clean underneath. This is an immature bird in April. You got those win wings in the window, windows in the wings on this bird in the spring of their second year, and then they're going to have this banded tail, but very clean underneath. The light colored flight feathers, unlike the dark colored of the Swainson's hawk. And then these large teardrop markings on an immature bird. And for some reason, I did not include uh, an adult bird. I apologize on that. But it's going to be a dark, light, dark, light, dark banded tail on the adult birds, but still very clean. And they're going to be light, light, light. This is a something else, the osprey. This is a fish hawk. You'll see those around Pueblo Reservoir. Uh, over in towards um, uh, uh, what's that brush hollow reservoir anywhere near water they're going to be here they're excellent fishing hawks they will fly over the water hover and then dive down and then come up with their fish and then they have special structures on their toes called uh, scoots that allow them to hold that sort of greasy fish and then they will turn that fish uh, face forward so that it's more aerodynamic in flight to taking it. And then the, they have kind of wrist patches like the rough legged, but then they have this checkerboard of light colored patagium, dark colored um, tertiary and secondary flight feathers, and then light colored primary flight feathers on the underside and a banded tail. And then they have a mask and then the females have a necklace. So this is a male, no necklace. This is a male, no necklace. A female will have a necklace. So here is a male osprey. They tend to fly either in an M shape 
or this rounded shape where their wrists are pressed forward. They have that mask over their eyes, the banded tail, very clean, light colored body, those wrist patches, a light colored, you know, four patch, so dark, light, light, dark on their wings. Again, another male, wrist patches, light colored primary flight colors, dark colored secondary tertiary flight feathers, and then light colored patagium and banded tail. And there's that classic M shape. And then there's the mask. And they can have a little mohawk. And here it is eating a trout that it caught over at Brush Hollow Reservoir. Feathering does not come down to the toes. Our another something else is our northern harrier. They are, the female is brown. She'll have a rounded head. She's going to have disc shape, shape feathers around her eyes to help, like an owl, to help direct sound into her ears because she's hunting mice in the grass. They can also probably see in ultraviolet so they can see the pea trails that the mice leave as they're going back and forth. Um, she's going to have dark armpits um, and then just kind of this brown speckling all over her. Um, and then she will fly close to the ground, coursing back and forth along field edges. And then the male, the adult males are gray colored. And then the, both adult males, females and immatures have a white band just on the upper side of their tail um, with the dark tips to their wings. And then here's that owl dish shape of the harrier. And that helps direct sound into their ears. And then being gray, it's a male. And then here's a beautiful adult female with dark auxiliaries. She has brown eyes. Um, and then she's just brown, you know, with all this kind of markings under her tail. They have a banded tail. And then you can see a little bit of that upper white band on the upper part of the tail. And then immature birds are going to be much cleaner. Uh, they're going to be cream to this orange. And then their eyes are going to be uh, lighter colored, uh, not brown of the adult female. And then we know this is going to be a female because she has dark armpits. But you have that banded tail and then the upper uh, white on the upper part. So let's get into our falcons. We have several falcons, the peregrine falcon, the prairie falcon the Merlin, the American Kestrel, and then the Jeer Falcon. So the Peregrine Falcon, other than the Jeer Falcon, is kind of our largest falcon. It has a helmeted head, kind of like those old Roman helmets with the, the things that come down over the face. So it's a very thick, dark mustache. They're going to be darker colored overall. They're going to have a checkerboard pattern on their wings or, a you know, just, you know, white, dark, white, dark all over. They are very fast. They're the fastest bird in the world in that they can dive at 200 miles per hour in a dive. And they're going to typically be near water. Um, but we do have peregrine falcons nesting on Cheyenne Mountain. So they do move away from water in breeding season if they don't have a cliff near water. Uh, so they will nest and then they will feed on pigeons and uh, white-throated swifts and stuff during that season. Um, so they are very fast, very aggressive birds, but they're that thick mustache, helmeted head of the falcon, and then the overall dark color, and then those long pointed wings of, of falcons, so they fly like jet fighters, so they have those pointed wings, so they're very fast. That helmeted head, even in dark, you know, lighting is very distinctive. They're going to hunt small ducks like teals and shorebirds during migration. And then here is a typical Colorado falcon with that dark, thick mustache, dark underside, um, kind of checkerboard body, pointed wings. And then our prairie falcons kind of have that penciled mustache. Uh, they're going to be blue on the back, brown on the females and blue on the back of the males, um, that kind of blue gray. And then that pencil mustache, they're going to be very light colored underneath, but they're going to have dark auxiliaries or underarms here 
Um, and that's kind of their only dark feathers and then other than their mustache on the underside. Uh, they're going to nest up in cliffs. They again also nest at uh, Garden of the Gods, at Cheyenne Mountain. In April, they are very vocal. So you will be able to see them. The male will be defending the territory and the female, and the female will be requiring the male to bring her food to prove that he's going to be a good uh, protector and feeder of her young. So here's a youngster who hasn't, he's, this is, you know, he's out on his own, he, she, and hasn't developed its pencil mustache yet, but very clean underneath. Here's one very fresh out of the nest, still has white natal down, but the beginning of the mustache is coming in. Uh, its tail hasn't fully grown in, in this case where the tail, the, the wings should be shorter than the tail, but close to the edge. They're going to fly by very fast. Typically when I see them, it's like that. They're going to have dark, be very clean and light underneath and then dark armpits. And then you can still see that pencil shaped mustache, but very long pointed wings, long tail to allow them to maneuver in those fast dives and flights. And again, very clean underneath, dark underarms, pencil mustache, pointed wings. So here at Kissing Camels, at Garden of the Gods, there's the male up here. Here's the female near the nest nesting site for that year. Here's a couple of young uh, at a nesting site at another location. So they like little cavelets to nest in. And then there's our Merlin. So our Merlin is a very aggressive um, uh, falcon. You at banding at raptor um, count stations, they will put up a plastic great horned owl just to pull the merlins down. They're very petite, maybe 16 inches long. Um, we have several races. There's the prairie race, which is the lightest race, the Tiaga race, which is the intermediate, and then there's the black merlin, which we don't get here in Colorado, which is very dark. Uh, they come down in the winter. And then they breed up in the northern part of the state and over into Wyoming um, is the closest they are. So this is a winter bird that you're going to go out on the eastern plains to look. and Or in the city in Colorado Springs, we'll see these uh, hunting pigeons. And um, this is another one where you can tell males from females. The males will be blue-gray. The females will be brown. The Prairie falcons, I don't, I'm not as positive that you can tell females to males. Uh, they're going to have a banded tail, long pointed wings. Their mustache will be slight to non-existent. And their flight is very fast. So here's a Tiaga. Uh, this is a rock pigeon, a headless rock pigeon, because that's the head over there. And it is larger than the Merlin. That is how aggressive they are. It has almost no mustache. This is a male because he's got blue-gray wings. Um, and they're just aggressive, fast birds. Here's a prairie race. And this is a female with her brown, almost no mustache. They kind of have a parakeet-shaped bill, uh, which is typical of falcons. And you can really see that bill here very well. Another female prairie race merlin, almost no mustache. Um, trying to find them and get them in flight is almost impossible. This is a male flying by. And I think the reason I got this picture was there was a Euro, uh, Eurasian collar dove sitting on a line, but he had probably already fed. And so he was casually flying by and eyeing that going, well, maybe later I'll have you as a snack. And then there's our smallest falcon and, and raptor, uh, well, diurnal raptor out there's some smaller owls the american kestrel they're about 10 to 11 12 inches they're also our most colorful raptor in the united states or north america and the male is going to be the most colorful and he has a blue gray head he has blue gray wings and then lots of red on his back and his front and then they have a double mustache so they have the mustache under the eye and a second one under their ear and then the male, he's going to have this brick red tail with this dark subterminal band, but the outer two feathers are going to be banded. The female, they're just going to be a banded tail all the way through. And then she's going to have brown or rufous wings, but she will have the blue gray head and the double mustache. So here's a female 
in my hand. <laughs> Just give you a size idea. Females and raptors are larger than males. And she has her double mustache, her banded tail, and then her uh, rufus. And they're here year round. Um, look on a power line uh, out east on a fence line. They're hunting mice, lizards, insects uh, to eat and uh, very beautiful birds. So here you can see that female is bigger than the male. In April, they're starting to pair up. They nest in cavities, tree cavities. They will take two nest boxes. Uh, there's a, a condominium complex up on the north end that put in nest boxes and had uh, American kestrels nesting. So if you have American kestrels nearby, put up a nest box. Maybe you'll have a pair nest on your property. Isn't that cool? And then there's the beautiful male, very colorful with those blue-gray wings, blue-gray head, double mustache, red back and belly and red tail. They look kind of like a flying banana, kind of have that sort of rounded shape of a banana with wings. And then there's the Mississippi kite. Um, down in Pueblo, they nest near water, uh, um, near like some of the lakes and streams down there. They are moving. They, they've come up the Mississippi River, up the Arkansas River, and now they are coming up Fountain and Monument Creek and nesting um, in Fountain and security and moving north. So they've been expanding their range. They're an ombre uh, bird where they have a white head, light gray to dark gray to black tail. They have red eyes as adults. Uh, they feed on dragonflies, and that's why they like to be near water because they need those dragonflies. And that's they nest colonially. So if you're in a park with a lot of trees or in a neighborhood with a lot of trees, there will be several pairs around that area nesting. And then the immature are kind of streaky brown, gray, and they will have uh, not red eyes. So here is a male bringing a stick to the female to prove that he will help her with feeding the young and protecting the nest. And he offers her that stick so he can mate with her. And there's that really good um, parakeet beak look. Um, but they are not falcons, they're kites. This is a something other. But that white head to light gray to dark gray to black. Uh, Pueblo Raptor Center has several that they keep over the winter if they can't get them rehabbed and out before they migrate south. And then we get into the hardest group, but there's hope. You can still identify these. Even if you get two, that's an occipiter, that's great. And there's three. There's the northern goshawk, the cooper's hawk, and the sharp's hawk. The northern goshawk, an adult, it's going to look very different from the cooper's hawk or the sharp's hawk. Uh, the Cooper's Hawk and the Sharp Shin look very similar, and we'll go over how to tell them apart. But if you can get to a sipiter, you're doing great. So the Goshawk is the largest. It's beefy. It's almost bootio in shape. It is gray, fine barring, with a big white eyebrow. It's called a supercilium. Um, it has a wedge-shaped tail. Um, then there's the Cooper's Hawk, which is in the middle. It's going to have a capped appearance, so a dark head, but a lighter colored neck. It's going to be red barring um, or white breast with rusty bands on there. And then a banded tail. All of these have banded tail, and then that tail is going to be rounded. And then the sharp shin is the smallest, kind of petite, very bug-eyed looking because it's so petite. The eyes look very large in the head, and it is going to have a rusty breasts with white bands. I, I don't see that. They look very similar to me, but it's going to have a squared off tail. And if you can see it sitting from the front, you'll see that the tail feathers are all the same length. Whereas on the Cooper's Hawk, it'll have a, a different length uh, of different feathers. And then that black head will, the neck and the head, the top of the head will go uh, be the same colored and not have a capped appearance. In flight, when you see a sharp shin flying, it you can't keep count the wing beats because it flaps so fast. On the Cooper's Hawk, it'll be slightly less fast, so you can kind of count the wing beats. And then the Goss Hawk will have stiff, powerful wing beats, but it's steady flight. It'll appear like a flying log. 
um, whereas the Coopers will have a looser tail and the, um, the sharp shin will tend to press its wing wrist forward um, and it will have a squared off tail in flight. So the Northern Goshawk, again, very fine barring in an adult, very gray, the white eyebrow, the dark reddish brown eyes, orangish eyes. In the immature bird, it's going to be uh, brown, but still have that banded tail, but it's wedged, very beefy looking, very large, not proportional body, kind of labored, almost bootio like flight. Uh, they are excellent at flying through the woods in small spaces. Uh, look up YouTube, Northern Goshawk flying through small objects. You'll be amazed at what they can do. And they will eat grouse, so dusky grouse, rabbits, squirrels tend to be up in the woods. So white eyebrow, very gray, um, beefy bird. And then this is that same adult bird here when it was a juvenile. Um, but brown, get that white eyebrow look, banded sort of wedge-shaped tail. You can see that the feathers are different lengths, but very close together. This is it's this is a size five shoe. So if anyone is has a size five woman's shoe, that's the size of their hopping in the snow. And this is they nest in discrete locations near open areas. You do not want to get very close to a goshawk nest. They will attack you. And it's just not a good idea. We don't want them to abandon. So give them plenty of room. Uh, the Cooper's Hawk, going to have a capped appearance, a rounded tail, banded tail, the white breast with the rusty bands. Um, you can count their, their flight. Um, they what can be seen on the ground running under trees to flush other birds. They're going to feed on your robins and your um, uh, gross beaks and those, you know, intermediate birds, um, the males and the females. So the male of the Cooper's Hawk and the female, the sharp shin are just about the same size. If you had them in hand, the Coopers would still be bigger than the sharp shin, but to the eye, we can't measure that well. Um, so they're going to appear about the same size, uh, whereas the female will be bigger, um, of the Cooper's Hawk and then the male of uh, the uh, sharp shin is going to be very small. They are year round residents. Uh, they nest here in Colorado Springs in the city, um, in the trees around Fountain Creek. Um, they're getting busy in late April, early May. They tend to, around the nest site, be loud. Kee, 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 kee. Uh, they do nest like up in Cheyenne Mountain too, um, but the sharp shins do also. So here is kind of a rounded head. When you draw a line from wrist to wrist, it's well behind the eyes, but you have that rusty um, barring or white, rusty and white barred chest, the banded rounded tail. And if you see them from front and the tail is folded, they're gonna be different lengths. And I don't know if I have a picture of that, but that nice rounded tail, An immature bird is going to be brown. They might have a little bit of white eyebrow, but it's a very short eyebrow versus the um, uh, the goshawk. Um, and here it is hackling up going, hey, you know, dude, you may be bigger than me, but I'm fierce. Let me go. Uh, this was one I thought might be a northern goshawk because it was so big. But and here you can really see that the banding of the tail but it was rounded tail. And the reason it looks so big and beefy was because its crop was full of food, making it look bigger than it was. And there's that slight eyebrow that goes away as they become adults. So here's a nice flight pattern of one flying kind of casually. And then this is a Cooper's Hawk nest, very discreet at a friend's house. Um, and here is some of its nestlings out of the nest and they were branchlings at this point. And this is a Rufus hummingbird that scared the poor little deers to death. But here they are, they haven't quite. And then this is the youngest one. They start out with blue eyes, 
going to more yellow eyes, and then they get that orange eye as an adult. And then the tiny, petite, bug-eyed, sharp shin hawk. Very, all the tails, feathers are going to be the same length when it's folded. It's very squared off. Even in flight, you can see it's very squared off. When you draw a line from wrist to wrist, it goes just behind the eye um, versus further behind. So it'll be very close, and then they very bug-eyed. They'll have very, it's called sharp shin because they have very thin legs. Um, but it, here is one flying with its wings a little further back, not pressed forward. But there's that nice squared off tail uh, with the tail feathers being all the same length. And then here's one in the backyard. And look at how thin those legs are. And that is how they get that name sharp shin. And it was hunting my birds at my bird feeders which, you know, they got to make a living too. And I'm happy for them to take all the house sparrows they want. Um, but very squared off tail, red rusty, bug-eyed appearance. Even in this sort of uh, uh, backlit picture, you can still see that squared off. And then drawing, it's just the line from wrist to wrist is just behind the eyes. Same thing. This one was that one, another one in my backyard, and uh, it had eaten well. You can see a little blood on the feathers, but that bug-eyed appearance. And what I did, this was very early in my birding career, I, I went out and I measured this length to kind of estimate that this was a female sharp shin. But there's that bug-eyed appearance, and then that the, the same color head, back, and neck are all the same color on the backside. Whereas the Cooper's Hawk, here you can see that, that same color all the way down. And the Cooper's Hawk will have a lighter colored neck, neck, neck or nape. And then here is an, uh, this was, I saw this bird on December 31st and January 1st. So on December 31st, it was a, a first year bird. And then on this January, December 31st, it was a first year bird. On January 2nd it, or 1st, it was a, second year bird and you can see it was starting to molt in some of its adult feathers where it's getting banded versus having all these streaks down its chest but that nice banded tail all the tail feathers are the same length and squared off and it has yellow eyes versus the orange eyes of the adult so any questions at the moment so we have a short quiz i'll just go through a few of these and just talk through it so really quick. I, yes, um, we do have a couple of other questions from Peg. Uh, going back a ways to uh, red tail hawks, are male and female red tail similar in appearance? Yes, they are the same. The okay. ma female will be larger than the male. Okay. Uh, next question: um, Are northern harrier numbers declining? If so, why? Uh, because we they have been to some extent because we have been clearing a lot of the wetlands because they tend to nest in wetland areas and so uh or in crop fields and then if the, the the farmers who are harvesting their crops if they don't wait a little longer until the the harrier chicks get off the nest they can destroy those nest sites when they're um harvesting Okay. okay. And then finally, how are the eyes of peregrine falcons protected during those incredibly fast dives? Well, they, when they dive, uh, they have a nictating lens they can bring down that they can see through. Um, but they're going to pull up at the last second. They curl up their talons like this, and they're going to hit the bird at that speed, which kills it immediately. I mean, you can imagine a car wreck at high speed. And then they follow that bird down and grab it in midair. And so uh, they're not going in head first. And that's true of all raptors. They're going to either close their eyes or move their head away at the last minute to grab their prey with their talons. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. So the way I say is I look at this bird and I go, is it an eagle, a budio, a falcon, a sipiter, or something else? And so I look at it, I go, well, I can't tell size, it's in flight, but I can see that it is a broad-winged and short-tailed bird. 
And so that makes it a bootio. So I have a one in five chance of getting this right. So what are the first things I notice about this bird? I notice it has a red tail. Ooh, that's a really good one. I notice that it has a dash and a, a comma and that the dash goes through the leaning edge of the wing. I notice it has dark head, light breast, and a barely discernible belly band. So that makes this a red-tailed hawk. And it, you can participate in the chat and put your guess in before I display it. And if you guys want to read that out to me since I can't see the chat, that will be great. So here we have another one. Is it an eagle, bootio, falcon, a sipiter, or something else? And this is a bootio, a broad wing, short-tailed bird. So what can we guess about this? Well, we can see it has pretty red rufous stuff. It's got a big gape. It's got a kind of a light colored head, a light colored breast, a light colored belly, but it has dark leggings. So this makes this a ferruginous hawk. And then there's that gape. We draw the line. It goes right through the center of the eye, has a white tail, and it does have a comma. And then it does have kind of a dash, but it doesn't go all the way through the leading edge. Ferruginous hawk. So the next one, eagle, bootio, occipiter, falcon, or something else. And this is a falcon. It has a double mustache. It's very colorful. That makes it an American kestrel. Then the bonus question, is this a male or a female? And it is a male because of the blue-gray wings and blue-gray head. Eagle, Budio, Falcon, Occipiter, or something else? Anyone? This is a something else. It's a turkey vulture, barely discernible head, white bill, um, V-shaped flight, silver uh, flight feathers, overall dark. And this is kind of how you practice, is working on that. So are there any further questions from anyone? All right, I am not seeing any more. Uh, thank you so much for your time. You're oh, welcome. Wait. Just got one from the, uh, no, just Peg saying thank you again. Oh, great. Well, thank you guys so much for coming out and um, hopefully you'll send me the link to where this gets published and I can put that out on my social media and I'm sure it'll go out on the uh, Arkansas Audubon's social media or webpage yes. so that people can watch this again at another time. Definitely. Thanks so much. It was great. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Brett. Blake.